and welcome to another time of DNA, Disciples in Action. Uh, I hope you've had a great week so far. I know I have. Looking forward to getting into the Word tonight. So hey, before we do, let's just pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace, and your love. Father, we thank you that your Word and the entrance of your Word brings light. Lord, and we love you and we praise you. Father, we just thank you that, that your Word changes us from day to day, changes us from glory to glory. And Lord, as we uh, sit and we wait upon you tonight, we have our hearts ready to receive your word, the seed of your word into our hearts, Lord, so a righteous harvest can grow up in us. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you and praise you. Amen. Well, tonight we're just going to continue on with our series in, uh, that we've been looking at with getting into God's best. How do we receive God's best for our lives? And tonight we're going to um, actually title our, our little message, Be Careful Little Ears What You Hear. Now, some of you might remember that old Sunday school song from way back, Be Careful Little Ears What You Hear and Eyes What You See and all that sort of stuff. But tonight we're going to actually have a have a good look at, at what we're hearing and how it affects receiving God's best. So, but before we get into the Word and before we get into that discussion, I'd like you to take about five minutes or so just to discuss amongst yourself. Think about all of the things that we've learned so far, all of the things that we've gone over so far in the Word, uh, and have a chat about what things it is that you th feel stops us uh, as Christians from receiving God's best. So what are the things that you feel stop either yourself or other people, the general body of Christ, from actually receiving God's best? Because God's got a best for us and he wants us to have it. He wants us to come into that place of good uh, plans that he has for us. He wants us to come into that promised land that he has for us, just like he had for the children of Israel. So have a quick discussion while you do that. I'm going to enjoy a cup of coffee. Bless you, and we'll talk to you soon. Just pause the DVD, and we'll get back to you as back. soon as we can. I've had a good discussion about what it is that uh, stops us or hinders us from receiving God's best. Um, I know we've been through a few different things, but tonight we're going to focus on be careful little ears what you hear. And our scripture reading today is going to come from Luke. So if you've all got your Bibles there, I encourage you to take them out, whether it's on your iPad, iPhone, uh, or the good old Word of God being in black and white, my favourite. And we're going to go to chapter 5. So now this is just after Jesus um, was preaching, uh, and there was a multitude there. So we're going to start at verse 1, and it's where Peter uh, is in his boat and things like that. So, so it was, verse 1 of Luke chapter 5. So it was, as the multitude pressed about to hear the word of God, that he stood, Jesus stood, by the lake of Gennesaret. And he saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and he taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night, and we've caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down my net, let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help. And as they came, and they filled both the boats, so that they began to sink. Now when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had, which they had taken. So we're just going to leave it there at verse 9. So here's the scene. Jesus is preaching to the multitudes. He's teaching them about the kingdom of God. Now we know that in the Bible it says that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And it says that he was anointed to preach good news to the poor. To set at liberty those who are bound to, to give sight to the blind and so on and so forth, according to the prophecy in Isaiah. So when Jesus was out there teaching, he went out, he, he was getting pushed against the shore, there was too many people, so he asked one of the, um, the boat owners there, Simon Peter, if he could hop in the boat and then go out a little bit from land so he could speak better to all of the people and not be crushed and actually have the water amplify his voice. So as he was teaching these people, he was teaching them about the kingdom of God. Now, Peter and his, and his fishermen friends, you know, James, the sons of Jeb, uh, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, they were professional fishermen. They toiled all night long and didn't catch a fish. So they'd been out striving. Toil is a natural thing. It's, a, it's part of the curse that we, we would toil to get work, to get our living as such. And so 
here they are, they've, they've toiled all night long and they haven't caught anything. And Jesus says to them, here's someone who's a teacher, not a fisherman, but a teacher. Go out into the middle of the lake, let down your net, and you'll catch fish. Now, there's a couple of things that we can look at here. Number one, the fish were always already there. The guys just didn't catch it, toiling in the natural. So Jesus says, go out. He's a teacher. He's not a, he's not a fisherman. Simon Peter had the opportunity to say, well, look, mate, you don't know what you're talking about. I, I understand that you know what you're talking about with what you're talking to the people about because, you know, you're teaching them. But you don't know anything about fishing, mate. We've been toiling hard all night long and we've caught nothing, nothing. He could have taken that attitude. You know, Peter very easily could have said, no, I'm not going to do it. But to his credit, he said, because of what you have said, because of your word, I'm going to go out and I'm going to let down my net. Now, it's interesting to, to think, what was it that Jesus was preaching? You know, we know it says in the Bible that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we can assume that Jesus was actually preaching on increase. Jesus was actually preaching out of the kingdom of heaven that God has a more than enough for us. And we can see that because of what actually happens in the next following verses. So here we are. Jesus says, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answers and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night, worked out of our natural persons, and we've caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word and under your authority, I will let down the net. And when they'd done that, they caught a multitude of fish, so many that their nets started breaking. They caught a boat-sinking, net-breaking haul of fish. You know, they hadn't seen that type of fish and that type of catch for a long, long time. You know, they'd been toiling all night long. But because Jesus said the kingdom of God operates different than the kingdom of this world, when you hear my word and you act on my word, then you're going to get the results. You're going to experience God's best. And so it's very important that we be careful as to what we're hearing. Now, Peter heard the word of God being preached. He heard about increase. He heard about abundance. He heard that God was a God that lavishes upon his people. You know, he's heard the stories about King Solomon, the richest king that ever lived, of King David, you know, a mighty, mighty wealthy man, of Abraham, the father of the faith, who was so rich that kings had to um, move him out of their place because he was richer than the kings in the land. You know, the, the Israeli people and the Jewish people didn't have a problem with God being a God of abundance. What they had a problem with was knowing how to receive God's best for their lives. And it's very clear um, because Peter actually accepted God's word. He accepted Jesus' word. He heard the word of God. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. He heard it preached. He received it as truth. And he stepped out in action on that. And there is a very simple uh, formula for faith. Hearing the word acting upon the word, believing in our hearts, and acting upon the word. You know, first of all, we've got to hear the word. So what are we hearing? What is it that we're actually listening to? You know, are we listening to um, the negative sides of life, or are we listening to what God has to say? You know, when, when we're starting to feel crook in our body, you know, do we hear our mouths saying, oh, I'm getting sick? I, I always catch the flu at this time of year. Oh, you know, I always get cold sores at this time of year. Or, oh, I always get headaches if I eat chocolate. doesn't matter what it is. You know, it doesn't matter how we're feeling on the inside. We can choose to say those things and then hear those things, which then in turn makes us believe it more or not believe it more. Or we can take the word of God and we can experience God's best by saying, no, Lord, you said by your stripes I was healed. You said that... I will always have all sufficiency at all times to do every good work. You know, you said that I'm above and not beneath. You said I'm the head and not the tail, that I will lend and not borrow. You know, there's a lot of different promises in the Word of God that we can lay hold of. There's a lot of different things that we can actually uh, hear when we read the Word of God, when we speak the Word of God. We allow it to go back into our ears, develop in our heart, believe it, and then we can act upon it. You know, going back, I've, got, I've gone back time and time again. But Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, it's one of my favorite scriptures. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says very, very simply, if you've got your Bibles, I'm sure you're scrambling to it just like I am. It says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouths, 
but you shall meditate in it day and night. Now that meditating is muttering it, it's talking about it. So you shall meditate in it day and night, thinking about it all day, all night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. You're going to find the good that God has for your life when you start putting into practice and putting into place his word. When you start meditating on his word, when you start hearing it with your ears. So what are you hearing? Are you hearing the things that are around you that are negative? Or are you hearing the positive God's message towards you? That the kingdom of God has come to this earth. That Jesus has fulfilled the price. He's done everything needed to do to provide for you. Now, like I said before, the problem wasn't that the fish weren't there. The fish were always there. The problem was that Peter didn't know how to get the fish. Jesus knows and God knows how to get everything that you need right now. Whether it be healing, whether it be abundance in finances, whether it be relationships restored, doesn't matter what it is, God has already prepared it for you. It's already there. Jesus said it's finished, it's done, it's completed. Nothing else needs to be done ever again. God has that covenant with us through Jesus Christ. So we can stand and believe God for his best. So what are you hearing this week? What do you choose to hear? Are you hearing about God and his best? Or are you hearing from the natural man? Now, I'll remind again, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove what is that good, that perfect and acceptable will of God. God bless. Have a good day.